My grandfather, Johnny Kasurik, was by far the strongest influence on who I am as a man today. He was a real stout character, a real man's man. You'll find him again and again in my fiction, especially as uh, Devin Dwyer's grandfather in The Unfallen. I admired that man to no end. I admire him still. Everything I do has as its underlying motivation the desire to make him proud of me. Very true. But when he would see something or hear something that pissed him off, he would routinely and habitually say, somebody like that, they ought to take him out, put him up against a wall and shoot him. It was a very common expression when I was a kid. I heard this all over the place from all sorts of people. If you watch the movie Talk Radio, Oliver Stone, Eric Bogosian, wonderful film. Really brutal, tragically brutal, but a really brilliant film, an excellent example of how to turn a play into great cinema. But if you watch that movie, you'll hear one of the callers on the talk radio show that is the uh, heart of the movie, you'll hear that caller say that. They ought to put him up against a wall and shoot him. Glenn Reynolds, the Instapundent, has a similar verbal affectation. He will cite something that he decries, that he laments, opposes, and despises, and then he will say extremely tersely, succinctly, he will say, tar, feathers. Just like that, tar, feathers. Tarring and feathering is a brutal torture. Um, I can't believe that anyone ever survived it. We hear the expression, run out of town on a rail, which just means being pushed out of town one way or another, and that's relatively peaceful by comparison to tarring and feathering someone. They're literally putting hot tar, meaning at the 200 degrees or hotter, incredibly hot tar on someone's body and then rolling them around in feathers. I can't believe anyone ever survived that torture. Another one that you'll hear all the time on the internet is uh, an expression attributed to Andrew Breitbart, punch back twice as hard. And that one we see all the time in the uh, Twitterverse and in other manifestations of internet pugilism. These are all instances of the logical fallacy two wrongs make a right. The implication is that by visiting pain on my opponent, I will have restored justice to the universe. This is insanely stupidly wrong. There was an act of injustice, and in order to address that injustice, I'm going to introduce another injustice. We haven't reduced the quantity of injustices in the world. We've doubled them. Two wrongs do not make a right. The rationale that will that you'll hear immediately after you point out the two wrongs don't make a right, the rationale that you will hear will be the logical fallacy two quo, two quo que, is it impossible to pronounce, two quo que. Two quo que is Latin, it means you do it too. And ergo, because you inflicted this original injustice, it's totally, totally morally right for me to inflict yet another injustice. Two wrong, wrongs make a right because you do it too. This is absurdly, insanely stupid. This is exactly the modus vivendi of Donald Trump, a presumptive nominee of the Republican Party for the Office of President of the United States. It is exactly and perfectly the motivation of Stefan Molyneux, whom I dissected two summers ago and demonstrated to be the exact sort of monster we're always decrying and yet never can quite identify. It is exactly and perfectly the modus vivendi of... He goes by the Twitter handle Nero. His name is Ma... Milo Yiannopoulos, I think. I don't know how to pronounce his last name. It's a wonderful Greek name. I love Greek names, but I can't pronounce them. So I would much prefer to call him Nero, and I think that appellation is more appropriate anyway because um, he is very much a great believer that he is an aristocrat and you are a mere peon, and your role in life is to kneel, worship, bow, scrape, tribute, and um, in no way contradict him. These are all 
manifestations of what I called the Army of Cartmans. I concocted this phrase in 2012 at the time when Glenn Reynolds, the Instapundent, and many another Twitterverse pugilists were mocking Barack Obama for having eaten dog meat as a child in Indonesia. Mockery mobbing up, chortling, snickering, sneering, uh, engaging in all of the behaviors that these same individuals will decry when they are evidenced by their enemies on the left. This is somehow thoroughly appropriate. Two wrongs make a right. When they do it, why? Because you do it too. This is the means, motive, method manifestation of the army of Cartmans. This is, I think, is a um, hideous response to the crimes afflicted upon the intellectual marketplace by the left. I don't think that it is an appropriate response at all. I think it simply ratifies and sanctifies these tactics in such a way that not only does the left cease to do it, the people who should and could do better instead do much worse and therefore they make the entire marketplace of ideas, they turn it into a slum, into a ghetto of the mind. They don't improve the world, they make it worse, they make it twice worse. Two wrongs don't make a right and two wrongful responses to ideas that you don't care for do not advance any good ideas whatever they do not advance goodness whatever they certainly do not make you a better person the three i named trump molyneux and nero are all incandescents trump is incandescent and driven molyneux and um milo yiannopoulos are both incandescent and cautious their ics they are demonstrating to you the early stages of cautious tyranny, the bullying that precedes a cautious tyranny, and what they are seeking by their bullying amounts to compliance. They don't care if you choose to behave in the way that they insist is moral. They really don't care if you choose to behave that way. They simply insist that you must behave that way. Well, compliance is not morality. If you have beaten or browbeaten your child into fearing to contradict you, you haven't created a moral individual, you've created a fearful individual who may someday rebel, but even if he doesn't, it doesn't matter because he will never be moral. He cannot be moral because you haven't led him in the way of morality. You've led him in the way of fear, of terror. Tyranny always destroys the tyrant, I've demonstrated how to destroy Trump. I demonstrated how to destroy Molyneux. I don't really feel any need to demonstrate how to destroy Nero. He'll do it himself. But mobbing up is self-destructive for the actor, regardless of what happens to the tyrant. And if you join into the mobs led by these Cartmans, these, this, these armies of Cartmans, if you make yourself a foot soldier in the army of the Cartmans, you are acting self-destructively. You are making yourself worse. You are not making yourself a better person, and you are not making the world better. You are simply destroying the one unique, irreplaceable ego that you have, you are scorning and scourging that ego, not to anyone's benefit and certainly not to your benefit. To the contrary, you are acting to your own self-destruction. You are destroying something that you cannot replace and that you cannot fully repair having done this damage. This is insanely stupid. This is a terrible, terrible thing. It is common to hear the expression, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. And so that's the argument that people would make for insisting that there's some benefit to joining into an army of the Cartmans is the enemy of my enemy is my friend. No, the enemy of your principles is the enemy of your life. And if you make common cause with someone who is an actual enemy of your genuine, fully thought out, fully endorsed and engaged intellectual principles, if you make common cause with a bully in pursuit of some temporary advantage of your appetites or simply to have the satisfaction of seeing your enemies ridiculed in public, if you make common cause with the enemy of your principles, you're making common cause with the enemy of your own life and the lives of your children. You're destroying the world that you claim to want 
in pursuit of some temporary satisfaction that doesn't amount to anything whatever. You're trading every bit of food you have for cotton candy. That's foolish. Just by itself, that's foolish. But it gets worse. Because the ultimate end for the army of Cartmans, the alleged enemies of tyranny, is tyranny. They are cautious tyrants, and this is where they must go. There's no place for an incandescent in power to go except to cautious tyranny. The future of their bullying is the so-called neo-reaction. This is the incipient stages of an attempted neo-reactionary push, an attempted neo-reactionary rebellion or revolution against the principles of liberty established by the American patriots in 1776. This is the attempt to impose a monarchist tyranny instead of a communist tyranny, but tyranny is tyranny, and when you're looking at your child from the other side of a jail cell, whether it's you who are jailed or your child who is jailed, it doesn't really matter. When you are separated from your own family by bars, then you will understand the consequences of making common cause with bullies, with tyrants, with knaves. If you believe in freedom, if you believe in individualism, if you believe in egoism, then you stand alone. And you don't ever mob up on bad guys just because bad guys want to mob up on you. Two wrongs do not make a right. And two quote 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 two quote quote is never okay. My name is Greg Swan. This is the Church of Splendor. I'm so glad I get to talk to you. I'll talk to you again next week.